much for that, Royce. Um, right, it's been said already, but I'm um, going to re-emphasise it because I think it's uh, very, very important that uh, what we're all doing here today is talking about nuclear disarmament and getting tried out of Scotland and getting rid of Britain's uh, nuclear arsenal, etc. But um, <coughs> we're actually here because uh, of our feeling for Alan McKinnon, and I think that um, it's very important that uh, we remember his contribution uh, because uh, it's consistently hard work over a long period of time in nuclear disarmament. The great intelligence and depth of knowledge, I mean, he brought his intelligence um, as a doctor uh, to something which is in some ways quite different from, from medicine, but in some ways very importantly similar mm -hmm. in as much as the damage that radioactivity um, can do to a to people, as, as John was mentioning there, um, a nuclear explosion and the damage that it would do. Um, you know, it kills doctors and nurses as well as it kills anybody else, actually, and defined that um, as it was in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where people were desperately in need of medical care, but the doctors and nurses have been killed or injured mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are important things, and for somebody like Alan um, to bring his medical knowledge to this issue, I think was something that was really invaluable. Um, and he was very inclusive of people from all um, political backgrounds and from political parties. He, he actually didn't, uh, he didn't say, well, you know, we're not speaking to you because you're from that party, we're not speaking to you, we'll pick this crowd instead. He didn't do that. He brought absolutely everybody on board. And I think that was one of the strongest elements that he actually um, brought to the movement of the Scottish CND. Um, because it's very important that we don't uh, put each other in pigeonholes and things when we come to this issue because this issue is important to absolutely everybody across Scotland and across the world in fact and that's something which Alan was very very aware of so it's incumbent on all of us to carry on the vital work of ridding Scotland of Trident and in the same mood and unity of purpose that Alan uh, had brought. So we need to carry that, that mindset forward with all of us. I think that's extremely important. Um, the cause of nuclear disarmament has brought us all here today is an international one, and I support the UN Secretary General's um, campaign and call for the adoption of a nuclear weapons convention um, along the lines of the conventions on chemical and biological weapons, which actually would lead us towards uh, everywhere, every country um, which has any form of nuclear capacity, you know, you know, you get a nuclear power station, whatever, every country being um, regularly inspected by the IAEA and making sure that we are all sticking to the rules and that we're all working towards the same end of a, of a world with, free of nuclear weapons. And I believe Scotland's huge contribution will be forcing the closure of Faslane Coalport um, as a nuclear naval base. Um, and as John was talking about the jobs that are there, um, although that is not, uh, that's not the primary consideration uh, in the end result, the primary consideration in the end result is the continuation of the human race uh, as opposed to the obliteration of the human race. So I think that's very, very important that we do actually talk about its closure as a nuclear naval base and look into the prospects of how we can ensure that those who do work there, what they do and how these skills and, and an interchangeability of skills can actually continue to contribute. Um, I don't expect anybody uh, who works down at Fasley and Coolport to put their hand up and say, could you shut this place, please? Because I want to go and sign on. You know, <laughs> I expect them. I expect them to want um, to make sure uh, for us to make sure for them that they have something else to do and something else of a commensurate nature. Now, not everybody who is an engineer is going to want to become a forest ranger, and I don't think there's interchangeability of skills there necessarily. But the options are there for other people to do those jobs and to be attracted into the area and to work there. And those engineers to actually do other jobs. Um, and I mean, we've got shipbuilding yards, etc. So, on that basis, we're actually not talking a, about, um, about loss of engineering capability or scientific capability. The prospects are there for them to work in those areas. Now, as a co president of PNND, I myself, 
Um, that's Parliamentarians for Nuclear Non-Proliferation and Disarmament, which is why we call it PNND, because we kind of keep going about saying that all the time. Um, I, <laughs> although it makes it sound important, I presume. Um, <laughs> I regularly speak at UN and other international conventions about nuclear disarmament in general, and Scotland in particular. And I believe that the way to make the big breakthrough is through um, the humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons series of conferences which have been established over the past few years. Started off in Oslo, then moved to Nayarit in Mexico, in Vienna. There's talk about it going to South Africa. Uh, there's a wee bit of a hiatus, which I'm not happy about actually because it's, it's sort of taking people's eye off the ball a bit. But the truth is that the International Committee of the Red Cross is backing this. We're looking into how the impacts of nuclear weapons uh, would result in people across the world starving to death, uh, being killed by radioactivity, being killed by explosion, being killed by fires, um, living a level of life which really uh, is nothing like the quality that can be expected today with any, with any good luck and good fortune. Um, so that's something that we really need to look at, and it is being looked at. And at the last meeting in Vienna, 156 nations signed up uh, to, you know, to go in along with, uh, we need to have a nuclear weapons convention, we need to stop this, we need to get rid of these things and pull things back and look at how we can develop security without nuclear weapons. 156 nations that turned up in Vienna signed up to that. It was actually 157 because I was there, but I wasn't allowed to sign up to it because we're not in the UN at the moment as we stand. So, but the fact is the two countries that attended didn't sign up to it, and that was the UK and the United States. And they said that these conferences are nothing more than a distraction, a distraction from the hard work that they're doing to reduce the number of nuclear weapons in the world and the dangers of nuclear weapons. Now these are nuclear weapons powers, to the extent where the, the, the delegates um, from the United Kingdom said this is a distraction and we're not taking part in it, we're not going to sign up for this um, because the UK and our nuclear weapons partners, that's Russia and China as well as America and France, um, are, the, are the serious actors in this, we are going to get rid of this stuff. Now nuclear weapons partners tends to suggest a lot of joint action and working together and chumminess. And it doesn't actually suggest danger coming from these people over here, so we've got to have these nuclear weapons here, and otherwise they would attack us. So they have to make their minds up somewhere. We, the real world, had non-nuclear weapons partners, as 156 signed up to this. Two didn't sign up to it because their wee group of partners have got the nuclear weapons with no intentions of ever getting rid of them. To the extent that, of course, as we know, £167 billion has now been talked about about upgrade and replacement of Trident. Son of Trident, it's going to cost £167 billion that we know about. And they've actually started, without going to Westminster, to get the clearance to start it from MPs down there, They've already announced that they've started on this work. So they're breaking their own rules. What they're also doing, though, is breaching Article 6 of the NPT, the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Article 6 says that it is against the, it's against the treaty to upgrade, replace, trade, or move nuclear weapons from one country to another. Now, already America's got five states where it's got its nuclear weapons cited in them here in Europe. The UK is moving and growing its nuclear weapons. They actually had a crash, of course, three years ago in the middle of the Atlantic with a French nuclear submarine. And it makes you think a wee bit, actually. No, <laughs> the Atlantic's an awfully big place, actually. And if you can manage to crash two <coughs> nuclear submarines which are fitted out with sonar and everything like that, what were they doing? I think they were playing war games. They were out there having a wee operational uh, joust and they failed in doing it properly and crashed into each other. Who knows what dangers that could have actually set off. But the real problem that we've actually got is 
we're, we're looking at how we can take things forward. Here in Scotland, we've got the entirety of the UK's nuclear arsenal sited in this country. And of course, as John could tell anybody, because he's been going out um, sort of doing secret squirrel and driving about and chasing them up and doing the roads and filming them and all that sort of thing, you know. Um, not so secret, actually, because the police uh, huckled you a few weeks back, didn't they, actually, you know, um, and said, what are you doing, and held them up until the nuclear weapons managed to get away up the road. But John's also been telling me about they're actually using the trains now to do it as well. And these trains are passing through Paisley, etc. And no matter what you think about Paisley, you shouldn't be doing things like that. <laughs> so these, these are serious issues. And um, it's, these are actually being trundled all the way from the south of England, right the way through England. I mean, I oh know we're talking a lot about you know, the dangers of uh, having these weapons uh, transported through our countryside and through our towns. They're actually coming all the way through England's countryside and towns as well. And I think that you know people down there need to be made much more aware of what's actually taking place, and that may actually engender a greater feeling uh, that something's got to be done about it. And I know that the great rally down in London last week actually focused to that to some degree as well. Um, but these are these are dangers that all political parties have to be aware of, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sure, and I know in fact, because in the Scottish Parliament last year. Uh, we, we stood strongly against nuclear weapons again and you know if they ever get their opportunity down at Westminster to actually um, vote on it then I think that there, uh, it's possible that, uh, or not impossible, that there might actually be a vote against it in, in Westminster as well. So on that basis all the political parties, all the people of different organisations can band together around this and I know that, uh, I know that uh, Scottish Labour as well have, have uh, said the same thing. And this is vitally important. The Greens and others are all actually bringing themselves towards this angle as well. I think it's very, very important uh, that we do work together and bring this uh, to everyone's attention because the only way to stop this is to expose it to light. Let people see what's going on. That's the important element. Last week, I uh, had the privilege of hosting a wee event in the Parliament um, and had a friend of mine, Sharon Dolev, from the Israeli disarmament movement come over and speak to us about what her small organisation is doing in Israel. And it's very difficult for them. The state's against them. Most people in Israel are totally against them because they think that the <coughs> country is in danger and these nuclear weapons, which they might and might not have, are actually keeping them safe. Now, on that basis, um, Sharon described what it's like to be a nuclear arms disarmer in Israel. Very, very, very difficult. It's not so difficult here. <coughs> but she's trying to shine a light on it in a country which suggests it might and might not have nuclear weapons. We know we've got them. They're down the road there. They're travelling through our communities. We've got to shine that light on them at all times. Make everybody aware of what's taking place. We've got an option here which they don't really have in that small movement in Israel, and that is to band together in as large a number as we possibly can. Show up these people, show up the dangers, show up the amount of money that's being wasted, but show up the dangers to all of us. And for us, for Alan's memory, for future generations, we need to do this. So let's do it. Leslie. Thanks, Ruth. Actually, Bill, Bill was a, was a bit modest there. Can I, can I mention your um, <coughs> Bill and, I, and I, obviously the leader of my party, Jeremy Corbyn, were have been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize for their PNND work. Isn't well, it? <laughs> I think the point that Bill finished with is an important one. So we're, we're here today to, to remember Alan. And what greater legacy of Alan's work would it be to actually make sure that we build that really broad coalition so that when, when it is decided at Westminster, we're tried in, that actually there is enough members in Parliament to actually vote against it. So that's what I want to talk about today. 
So, so the sort of the practicalities of actually trying to to get this broad coalition. Uh, so, so my, my background is, is yeah, so a newbie on the on the platform today, but actually we obviously have a newbie at uh, Holyrood. I only became an MSP in in, in mid uh, January, and I've got another three weeks. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, my background, I'm an economist, uh, and I'm a member of uh, CND, um, not Scotland CND, but CND, because I want to get rid of, I want to get nuclear weapons out of UK, not just out of Scotland, but I want to get rid of them, full stop. Well, my background says as an economist, but also working in change, you know, trying to get people change their mind in different organisations. And how... I've got a wee framework that I always use, doesn't matter where I am, with what organisation or what industry that I'm working in, and it's, it's called the sort of change equation, right? You could, go, you could Google it. But the main thing is, how do you overcome resistance to change, right? So you need to identify the person's values and, and why are they dis dissatisfied. What's the vision going forward and how are the next steps to get in there? Because we know our values, we know our values why we're against Trident, why we're against nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, not everybody shares those values. So we need to identify arguments that actually hook people into their values. So I've got four, four aspects of, of creating this um, wide enough coalition to put forward to get parliamentarians on board. So the four aspects, or the four threads, are the general public, the military, the Tories, and the other members of the Labour Party. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the public, I think actually the CMDs, they've done a huge amount of work, and obviously on the back of, for John and, um, and Alan, but actually about get, just hooking into the public, no, just getting people on board, you know, thinking, because it's really difficult when you see big numbers and you see 100 billion or however many million. What, what does that mean? Everybody just thinks it's, it's a big number, right? So in, in my work as, a, as an economist, so, so when I think of, I used to work in housing, so I used to think of money in terms of houses, new built houses, right? So I think maybe 150 <coughs> grand, that's a new built sort of council house, right? And then I went into the NHS. And then I started using NHS budgets, so like 500 million. Okay, that's a that's a sort of average NHS budget for a year. Right? So you see, and then, but we need to get things that people understand, we need to be able to visualise. So you think, so what could you get for 100 billion? Well, if you think actually a secondary school, 25 million. Now you go shopping. Right? A primary school, 5 million. Right? So you could build a huge number of houses off 100 billion, right? So I think we, that's a good hook for the, the, the public. And you saw that, I think one of the first ones with the, the CND uh, banners and t-shirts and stuff, at Tory conference in Manchester in 2013. And it was really good. You, know, you had people, doctors there with their banners, you know, invest in the NHS. You know, so really, and, and obviously that's going down pretty well in Scotland as well. So the public, the military. Now I think it's actually been really helpful that George Osborne decided in, what was it, 2010 or 2011, to put the Trident renewal to actually make sure it comes with the core funding of defence. Right? I think that's really helpful for us, because actually, many people in the military didn't really want that money spent on Trident. They would rather buy guns, right? And remember, this is not about our values. We need to understand their values. Because if we want to persuade them, we need to make sure that we need to use arguments that actually they think they agree with, right? And you've seen that recently. What was it? Major General Patrick Cordenley is retired. And he's come out and saying, actually, we didn't want this. It's not, it's not effective. We're not going to use it. We want things that we could use to kill people now. So, uh, so we need to... So it is about, it's about, it's about trying to get arguments to persuade people given their values. Um, because... The Treasury, obviously, everybody, well, they've bought into this whole austerity thing, and actually, we need to think about it. So if, they're, if the 
Depart Department of Defence, MOD's defence budget is really tight, right? And actually we have enough members of the, whether they're retired of the officer class, thinking actually this weapon's no very effective. We want to be able to tool up our, our army line. And I think actually we'll, the, the, the student, the, the, the closer it comes to decisions, I think more unrest from the, from the military. Because we need to, we need to realise, we need to have a, a broad enough coalition to make sure that this doesn't go forward. And one of the, well, actually, one of the things that when I was going through um, the, the documents from the MOD, and, uh, and it's quite interesting when you look at the sort of economic appraisal, right? so they obviously go through whatever their, their own way, and actually it's called the cost effectiveness analysis. So I, I think actually quite a lot of um, military economists would say actually I think we would rather have X amount of guns or, or helicopters rather than Trident. So we need to. So remember, and we just need to remember, it's not about our values; it's about their values and making sure that how do we persuade them. The Tories. We've got Michael Portillo on our side, <laughs> and it was a really good um, graphic from CND with a wee quote from Michael Portillo about how he's against. Well, he doesn't want to renew Trident. So I think I think we need to we we all we we just need to try to make sure that we've got a broad coalition as possible because we need to put the pressure on we need to put the pressure on to make sure that enough parliamentarians vote against it. So we need to be saying, okay, if we if you if you accept the conservatives' premise about austerity, right, and all this. As we said, nonsense. But no, we need to remember this is this is about persuading Tories about they accept austerity and actually the the economics. They want to reduce the deficit. They want to reduce the debt. Well, okay, but if you accept that, well, what do you want? Your 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 opportunity cost. Okay, so then it comes back to the defence budget again. Do you want do you want big? Do you want to have um, soldiers and well tooled up, or do you want your, your trident? And, and then about the effectiveness, and I think it, a few other uh, Tories have come on forward about against Trident. So we just need to remember it's always about trying to persuade them, given their values. And then I'm just going to some, uh, finish on persuading people in my own party. So it was really good, it was a real step forward at conference last year about having, having an emotion vote against, against the rule of Trident. And it was really useful in having making sure that the trade unions, obviously apart from the GMB, um, but I'm sure that if, and we can't, it's about recognising where people are. Remember, it's not about saying that we are right and they're wrong, it's about recognising people's, people's values and, it, and just trying to persuade, persuade people. So it was really important, I think, having, having Jeremy elected was such an important step. Um, in this process, and it, and it, and it must have been just for for Alan to, to see to see Jeremy elected as well. But it is about but it is about moving forward and actually changing opinions. So we want to make sure. So we need to make sure that the MPs who are here have a, a different opinion to Jeremy on Trident, and we we need to move them in there. In their opinions, so it is about actually what do you want, and and, that, and that's where the public again come back in and put pressure on the parliamentarians. Do you think this is a good use of money? Yeah. Is it particularly effective? And that's where we need. So we need those different uh, threads. And actually, I think it's actually very useful having Emily Thornberry now um, leading up the sort of shadow defence position. Because I think Jeremy wants that support there, and we need to build that to make sure that we have enough parliamentarians voting against us. Because that would be what a legacy that would be for the work that Alan's done. So thank you. Thanks very much, Liz. I'm just going to open it up straight away for contributions, questions uh, that relate to this topic. Yep.